Hello everyone, my name is Sasha Chess and welcome back to yet another One Piece card game video. So, we talked about red, we've talked about green, now we're going to talk about blue. And blue seems to have a lot of very, very strong cards. I'm super excited to talk about them. So let's just go through all the blue cards and see which ones are the standout ones from OB01 Romance Zone. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribing if you want to keep up to date with more One Piece card game news because on the 22nd of July, we will be opening up our first ever booster box of OP01 Romance Dawn. I'm super excited to share the opening with every single one of you. Well, without further ado, let's take a look at all the blue cards coming from OP01 Romance Dawn. All right, so I'm using the official One Piece website again. Uh, right now, we have all the blue cards ready to go. So we've already talked about the three leaders, Doflamingo, Blurple Kaido, Blurple Crocodile, all of them really, really strong. So let's just move on to the first card. And this one, I gotta say, it's a doozy. It's so, so good. So first we have Arlong. First of all, this card's artwork is just insane. I really love it. I wish it was more of a full art thing, but you know what? It's all good. We have Arlong himself. Four cards, 5,000 power with a slash attribute with counter 1,000. Uh, part of the Fishman and Arlong Pirate. So I can't wait to have an Arlong Pirate's uh, type deck. Maybe Arlong himself as a leader in the future. I'm super excited. But his ability is Dawn 1. Activate main. You may rest this character. Choose one card from your opponent's hand. Your opponent reveals that card. If the revealed card is an event, place one card from your opponent's life area at the bottom of the owner's deck. This card is so insanely cool. It's so good. And the thing is, it's like, okay, let's just take it as a baseline. You rest this character, you choose your opponent's hand, uh, uh, you choose a card from your opponent's hand, they reveal it, and it's not an event card. You still gain information from your opponent's hand. There's a reason why cards like Thought Seize and, and what well, duress is very strong in like Magic the Gathering because, because even knowing like one card from your opponent's hand is information and it will be very, very useful to you. But best case scenario is that you rest this card, you choose a card from your opponent's hand and it's an event. Boom, there goes one of your opponent's life. Just like that. This card is insanely strong. I will run four of this guy in a dedicated like blue deck. I believe there is a blue purple shell that uses one of the uh, purple cards. I believe it's Bao Huang. Uh, but we'll talk about purple in the next video and they work really well together so when that card when the time comes when i talk about that card i'll mention our long again but our long definitely a really strong card even the stat line at four cost five thousand power if you're not uh using him resting him for the ability you can just attack your opponent with him our long is so good man and dedicatedly and deservingly so our long is just one of the coolest antagonists in the early one piece so I really like his, uh, really like his card. All right, next up, we have everyone's favorite waifu, Alvida. Two cost, 3,000 power, the striker attribute with counter 2,000, so very good. Part of the buggy pirates, and ability is Dawn 1. When attacking, you may trash one card from your hand, return one of your opponent's characters with a cost of three or less to the owner's hand. So definitely has some use. I mean, you do need to attach one Dawn to Alvida, maybe even two to get over the 5,000 power stat line. And you do need to kind of uh, trash one card from your hand, but it comes with tempo. You can return one of your opponent's characters, maybe a blocker, maybe it's a useful card that they need, like a, you know, for the green deck, uh, like a tree cost, you know, a, a killer, or maybe even from the Akazaya 9 deck, where you can return back an Okiku or something. Definitely has some use. Um, if not, counter 2000, so it's still good in a blue shell. So definitely really quite useful. All right, we've got a couple of vanillas. This is Virgo, five cost, 7,000 power. So the stat line is actually really quite good with counter 1,000. Part of the Navy, Don't Kill the Pirates, and Punk Hazard. Yep, there you go, vanilla Virgo. If you want to play it as a top end, you could. It's not that bad. And honestly, honestly, with 7,000 power at only five costs, yeah, I can see myself playing like one or two just to have it in the deck, provided I have enough slots, of course. Next, we have Dawn Creek, four cost, 6,000 power with a slash attribute with counter 1,000, part of the Creek Pirates. This is your other vanilla. So there you go. Artwork is pretty lit though, not gonna lie. All right, next up, we have the Super Rare Crocodile. And I raved about this card on my Twitter page, but seven cost, 7,000 power with the special attribute with counter 1,000, part of the seven Warlords of the Sea and Baroque works. And his effect is Banish. So 
That means when this card deals damage, the card target card is trash without activating its trigger. And uh, his ability is also Dawn 1. It will give all the blue event cards in your hand minus 1 cost. That means you make every single event card in your hand uh, cheaper by 1 cost. So definitely, definitely an insanely strong effect. This card as the top end for your Baroque Works deck definitely really great i love this card and the fact that he makes all your event cards cheaper by one meaning you can play like the baroque works event card for free this card is so good it's insanely good and definitely if you're intending to play baroque works you gotta get a couple of you gotta get a play set of this guy for sure all right next up we got gecko moria four cost five thousand power with a special attribute with counter one thousand part of the seven warlords of the sea and trailer bug pirates uh his effect is your turn uh, your this character gains double attack if you have five or less cards in your hand definitely really really strong card i mean the fact that he can get double attack without you having to attach dawn to him you just need five or less cards in your hand so good i think the blue mono blue doflamingo uh seven wallows of the sea deck will definitely utilize gecko moria really really well and it's so good to see moria getting like a effect that has really really like a really really strong effect you know double attack is no joke we all know the great power of it and you can still attach dawns to him to make him even stronger i love this card it's really good next up we got caesar clown four cost five thousand power with the special attribute uh with counter one thousand uh his type is scientist and park gang is it so uh, let's just talk about that real quick. I know we have not seen Vegapunk yet in the actual anime and manga, but in the future we might. I'm excited to see Vegapunk on a card. But that being said, his ability is on KO, play one smiley from your deck, then shuffle your deck. Smiley is a card that we'll talk about soon. Um, but Caesar Clown, the stat line is great, 4 cost 5,000 power, and you can just keep attacking with it. And if your opponent deals with uh, Caesar Clown, then they have to deal with Smiley next. So I think it's a really strong card. I don't know if there's a dedicated like Punk Hazard type deck, um, but on its own, I think there is a like Caesar Clown Smiley engine going over here. Uh, so definitely quite useful as well. I would love to see a Gangster Gastino card in the future. When we when we go to a a set that features like Whole Cake Island. I hope we get a Gangster Gastino card. Oh my god, that would be like so awesome. All right, next up we got the one and only Dracul Mihawk. Nine cost, nine thousand power with a slasher attribute, and abs of steel. Look at that, goddamn! Seven Wallows of the Sea and Swordsman, and his ability is on play. Place one character with a cost of seven or less at the bottom of the owner's deck. This card is insanely strong. If you're playing like the dedicated blue deck, this is your top end right here. I mean, you can, there's so many targets that cost seven or less. You can just return it back to the bottom of the opponent's deck. Like the Doflamingo from the blue starter deck return its return cards back to the hand, which is okay. This card sends it straight to the bottom of the owner's deck. This is what I wish Doflamingo was, but you know what? I'm glad it's on Dracul Mihawk. And uh, we got a little leak of how his alternate art looks like, and it looks crazy, crazy good. Even the regular art looks awesome. So Dracul Mihawk, definitely get a playset of this guy. I think it's, he's, I think it's really good. <laughs> definitely get maybe like a tree off in your deck as a top end. So insane. All right, next we have Jinbei, four cost, 2000 power with the striker attribute, part of the Fishman and Straw Hat crew. His effect is on play, place one character with a cost of three or less at the bottom of the owner's deck, and the triggered ability is play this card. So it's weird that we got a Straw Hat crew type card in in blue, and I wish he kind of had the Seven Wallows of the Sea subtype so that you can kind of trigger it, or trigger it off like Doflamingo's ability, the Doflamingo leader. But he's okay. I think it's all right. I mean, the fact that he sends it to the bottom of the deck is very, very good for sure. But the thing that I'm just kind of uh, about is that he only has 2000 power. So that's my only worry, but the ability is quite strong. So maybe that's why you can send a blocker back to your opponent, to the bottom of the opponent's deck. So definitely quite strong in that regard. All right, next up we get Smiley. Now, Smiley is three cost uh, with 1,000 power with a special attribute with counter 1,000. Part of the biological weapon and punk hazard. And his effect is Dawn 1. 
this character gains plus 1000 power for every card in your hand ladies and gentlemen we have slifer the sky dragon in this deck it's quite cool though i mean if you are in a dedicated deck that has the caesar clown and smiley engine and you are just having a lot of counters or events in your can this card gets exponentially better now only uh on your turn so your opponent can also just attack into smiley on the following turn because he only has 1000 power but on the turn that he can attack definitely a really strong you can have five cards in your hand and this guy is already a 7000 power character because like five plus the extra dawn plus 1007k so good so i think it's good for like one or two attacks after that you know you gotta you gotta see you you still need to keep ca uh, cards in your hand so uh, Smiley is very good in the early game, but it might fall off in the late game. Next, we have Don Quixote Do Flamingo, 3 cost 4000 power with a special attribute, uh, part of the 7 Wallows of the Sea and Don Quixote Pirates. Uh, he has Blocker, and on play, look at the top 5 from the top of your deck and place them at the top or bottom of the deck in any order. So this works very well with his leader counterpart, rearranging the top 5 cards of your deck and setting up, you know, things that you need on top so that when you use the Flamingo's ability, you can just put it into play rested. Um, yeah, I really, really like this card. And the uh, I believe there's an alternate art as well that looks really cool. I know a lot of people aren't a big fan of this artwork. I, I call him like Chat Bingo because of how he looks. He looks like, I don't know, a stand user or something. But um, yeah, I think the ability is quite good for a, you know, you can work with Perona, you can work with this, so definitely very useful. Next up, we got Bartholomew Kuma, 4 cost, 5000 power, the striker attribute with counter 1000, part of the 7 Warlords of the Sea and Revolutionary Army. Uh, he has Blocker and on KO, play 1 per service staff with a cost of 4 or less from your hand. So, definitely really, really useful. It's a blocker for one thing that you can block and you can KO it after it's being blocked. If your opponent's attack is a little bit stronger and you can replace it with another Pacific Star. There is going to be a dedicated Pacific Star deck in the future because of the Pacific Star card that we will talk about soon. So this card is definitely useful in that engine as well. And here we go. This is the Pacific Star card. 4 cost 5000 power with a special attribute. Part of the biological weapon and navy. And his effect is you can have as many of this card in your deck as the rules permit. Now, I think the wording should be you can have more than 4 of uh, this card in your deck. You can have any number of cards as long as it doesn't exceed 50. I mean, you can have more than 4. That's basically what it says. And it has blocker. So, you know, cards like Sento Maru from the blue starter deck, cards like the Kuma card that we just talked about, and then you can have a bunch of Pacifistas. It's super good. This is a dedicated engine. We just need to find the right number of Pacifistas to put in the deck because Pacifistas does not have counter. So if you gum it up a lot in your hand, then you might not be able to counter um, attacks because this card has no counter. But still, it's a very, very strong card. It's an annoying card to deal with as well because it has blocker. So I'm excited to see what people do with the whole Pacifista engine. I'm really, really quite excited to see. All right, next up we get Bellamy, two cost, 4,000 power, the striker attribute, counter 1,000, part of the Dress Rosa, part of Dress Rosa, I don't know, but yeah, just your two cost vanilla, so let's move on. All right, next we got Perona, one cost, 2,000 power, the special attribute with counter 1,000, uh, part of the Thriller Bug Pirates, and on play, look at the top five cards from the top of your deck and place them at the top or bottom of the deck in any order. So this card works really well with the Mono Blue Doflamingo, Actually, this card looks, this card just works very well in a shell that uses blue. So you can kind of sort out your draws in the next couple of turns. Or if you don't like the top five uh, cards of the deck, just ship it to the bottom and hope for the best. And not to mention, Perona is also going to be a box stopper for the booster set. So I'm excited to get four Peronas because I really like the artwork and the ability is very strong as well. All right, next up, we have Boa Hancock. Boa Hancock is four cost, 5,000 power, the special attribute with counter 1,000, part of the seven Wallows of the Sea and Kuja Pirates with blocker. And Dawn 1, when attacking or on block, draw one card if you have five or less cards in your hand. This card is just really, really strong. I love this Boa Hancock card. It's extremely strong. I mean, you don't even have to block. You can attack with it. Uh, and if you need the card draw, you can just attack with it. And you can draw one card just for attacking. Definitely a really, really good card. I You don't even need to put it in the Seven Wallows of the Sea kind of deck. Any blue deck can run Boa and it's actually really, really good. 
So I think is this is worth getting a playset of because it's useful in almost any deck uh, in the future for blue. All right, next up we got Miss All Sunday in Robin Chuan herself. Three cost, one thousand power with the striker attribute. Um, with counter 1000 part of the baroque works and it's a blocker and on ko if your leader has the baroque works type at one event from your trash to your hand definitely a must have four off if you're planning to play baroque works because baroque works wants to cycle through their events you can bring events back to your hand and use it again it's really really quite good in a, in a pinch you can also use uh, like your love love beams and bring miss all sunday uh, and bring love love beams back to your hand with miss all sunday's ability so definitely very very strong all right next up we get miss double finger zala three cost four thousand power the slasher attribute with counter one thousand uh and her ability is on ko draw a card so you still need to ko this card to be able to draw a card but you can always use it as early on pressure so your opponent has to deal with this card Next up, we have Mocha, 3 cost, 5,000 power with the striker attribute uh, and part of Punk Hazard. So this is the 3 cost vanilla slot. I just really like the artwork. You can see the shadows of the other kids at the back running to chase after the candy. So very, very cool card. All right, next up, we get Monet, 2 cost, 3,000 power with the special attribute with counter 1,000. With the triggered ability, play this card. So, I mean yeah i don't know if these kind of cards are good i mean there was carrot there was kawamatsu and you know zero abilities so you have to see whether she's worth playing in any deck all right next up we get mr one Daz bones two cost three thousand power with the slasher attribute and counter one thousand part of the baroque works and his ability is dawn one on your turn if your leader has the baroque works type then this character gains plus one thousand power for every two event cards in your trash this card is easily one of the more stronger baroque work cards it's definitely your finisher of the deck because you can get his number up to like an insane amount like you can get his number up to like maybe even like six seven thousand easily with the baroque works type deck and i've seen some gameplay on hibiki's channel where he was using the baroque works deck and you have like three dust bones on your side of the field each of them swinging for like six to seven thousand it gets really really oppressive really really fast so definitely get a play set of this card if you're intending to play the baroque works type deck all right next we have mr two himself mr born chan three cost four thousand power the striker attribute with counter two thousand so that already is really good part of the baroque works and dawn one when attacking look at the top five cards of the deck reveal one baroque works type event card and add it to your hand and place the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order so extremely extremely powerful ability very good stat line as well if you're playing baroque works you need for mr two easy definitely get for mr two because even if you don't use it as an attacker mr two got counter 2000 so all good Next we get Mr. Tree, Galdino, 2 cost, 3000 power with a special attribute with counter 1000, part of the Baroque works and on play. If your leader has the Baroque works type, select one of your opponent's characters with a cost 4 or less. The selected character cannot attack until the end of your opponent's turn. So definitely a stall type card, like a stacks type card. Um, it's okay it's kind of it's kind of useful i can see you running at least two or three of this guy in a baroque works type deck um however it will just be there because it's three thousand power so not really a strong stat line but at least you can hold off aggression using this card in the baroque works type deck all right next up we have overheat two cost uh counter two cost event counter part of the seven warlords of the sea and don Quixote pirates and the ability is counter your leader or one of your characters gets plus four thousand power during this battle then return one active character with a cost three or less to the owner's hand the triggered ability is return one card with a cost of four or less to the owner's hand this card is extremely extremely strong it's combining like the level of beam with trust pad cannon you can get the plus four thousand and you can return the character back to your opponent's hand as long as it costs three or less you can return back a blocker you can return even like your rested characters just to kind of save it as well so definitely it's quite versatile and the triggered ability can sometimes save you from a like a, a lethal blow as well so this card definitely really strong i think with all the card draw that you're getting from the blue purple crocodile deck i might just run this over over like level beam because i think overheat is definitely uh quite strong definitely quite strong 
Next up, we get Officer Agents. Now, now this is a two cost event counter with the Baroque Works type and the effect is counter play one Baroque Works type card with a cost of three or less from your hand and the triggered ability is activate this card's counter effect. So this card is actually really quite good because you can like your opponent attack into you and let's say you have no blockers. You can play Officer Agents as a counter and then put down the three cost Miss All Sunday. The Baroque Works deck might want to use this might want to use a little bit of this. You can really catch your opponents off guard then. All right, next up we have Desert Sparta, one cost uh, event counter uh, with uh, part of the seven wallows of the sea and Baroque works and the ability is counter your leader or one of your characters gain plus 2000 power during this battle. Then look at the top three cards of your deck and place them at the top or bottom of the deck in any order. And the uh, trigger ability is draw two cards and trash one card from your hand. So definitely has some use, I think, in a dedicated shell. If you want to, like the Doflamingo deck, if you want to have the ability to kind of rearrange the top three cards of your deck, then this card will be very, very useful. If not, draw two, trash one, if you uh, get it triggered from your life, is quite good as well. So I don't know how many of these you will run, but I think it's quite useful in some regard. So yeah. All right, next up, we have a Crescent Cutlass, three cost event counter, part of the seven Warlords of the Sea and Baroque Works. Counter, if your leader has a seven Warlords of the Sea type, return one character with a cost of five or less to the owner's hand. So a stronger version of Trustpad and the ability to return a, a character with cost five or less. You know, this is the card that can target Yamato right there. Your five cost secret rare Yamato, bring it back to the hand with this card. But you can only use it during the counter phase. So, uh, but I think it definitely has some use. I do believe it's quite useful. I don't know how many of these it will run, but it will have some use. Maybe an upgraded version of the Crocodile starter deck yeah, I can see myself playing this. All right, next up, and I think this is the last card for blue because blue doesn't have any secret rares. It's Baroque Works. So one cost uh, event card with the Baroque Works subtype. Look at the top, look at five cards from the top of your deck. Reveal one Baroque Works type other than Baroque Works and add it to your hand. Then place the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. This is a must have for the Baroque Works deck. This is a definite, definite playset because you want to be churning through your deck, you want to be playing this Baroque Works type and put it into the trash so your Mr. One gets better. You can grab it back with uh, your Miss All Sunday. You can search it with Mr. Two and then you can play it again. And yeah, it's really, really good. This is a definite must have. You, uh, you do not cut the number of cards of this card. Just run a playset if you're intending to play Baroque Works. All right, there you have it. Every single one of the blue cards from the main set, OP01, uh, Romance Dawn. I think Baroque Works, definitely the clear winner here. Really, really strong cards. The Pacific Star Engine, definitely something that I'm excited to see people play. And I really like Arlong. I really, really like that card. So I'm excited to see what people do with the Arlong card in the future. Well, that's it from me for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this really long video talking about every single one of the blue cards. But I'm just doing this for myself as well because I want to know about the cards and I can easily refer to my thoughts in the future as well. So, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and if you made it this far, thank you so much and please go get some rest. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.